Okay, here we are at one of the taxi depots in San Francisco. There's Jack. We are working on the flywheel cab number 1507. I'm gonna do an updated version of the head gasket replacement. Here's a list of the tools. I'm not gonna name them all. So just pause. Basic uh, 10s, 12s, 14s, 17s, 19, 21 sockets. Just pause that. Look for these tools. Jack up your Prius, remove the wheel. Normally we would use the gun to remove the harmonic balancer, but we understand that not everybody has one of these nice, cheap Harbor Freight guns. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a half inch ratchet, 19 millimeter socket. We're gonna place it on it. We're gonna put it on reverse. So we're spinning it back. We're gonna wedge it up against that. And we're gonna have our good friend Jack crank it. Go ahead. Just a brief crank. That's it. Now, that bolt is reversed. Remove this plastic cover to get to the 14 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, 14 millimeter. Remove this next, you have a couple circle tabs on the edge. Bend them up. This whole thing, you slide it down, just about a good half inch. Comes right out. Next. One, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts for the windshield wiper motor. Next, all these tens. Take off that bracket, all 10 millimeter bolts. Kind of obvious, the silver ones. All right, next up, we got to drain the coolant. This is the cab. Oh, actually it has a stop guard. Normally they don't. Okay, so you're gonna go through, reach through this hole right here, back towards this hole. This is where the drain hole is and you'll feel a little spigot or a wing nut type bolt. Just reach in there, give it a twist and you'll see it's leaking. Obviously, he's not a catcher. Next, air box. This whole assembly right here. Got a pen. 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 Take off that clip. Two more bolts down on the side. Move this hose. Just under. There. Next bolts are all tens. You have that bolt, that bolt, that 10 millimeter nut, that 10 bolt, and this 10 bolt. Once you have the nut and the bolt off, remove this bracket. Don't worry about these AC lines. They, they move pretty freely. They allow you space to clear it out. Next, we're gonna start removing um, this ground right here. All the tens on the coils. Almost with every Prius, you'll encounter this problem where the clip doesn't you push, even though you push on the clip, doesn't really pull out. It's easier just to get a small standard, and pop it. Just makes life easier. Okay, next we have to do these three sensors on the back. Um, oil pressure, knock, and uh, O2 sensor. They're just like every other sensor, they got a little tab on the back. That pulls right off. See, that's the uh, oil pressure crank position and O2 sensor. Crank position. Yeah. O2 sensor, I just slide it off right there, makes it easier. 
Next, you remove the clips on the top side after you did the three back there. The variable valve. This clip, you just push this out. Slide that up, same with this. Now we're going to do the water pump. AC compressor. Knock sensor. Throttle body. This little plastic clip right here. Just pull it off. If you have trouble, you can just cut it. This, where it stays. Just pull it up. The fuel injectors. Be careful not to pull on the wires themselves. Just pull on the clip. There. Got the cam position sensor. Easier to do that with needle nose pliers. And next, I'm taking off these two ground wires right there. Next, we move the purge clip, the map sensor. Remove that 10 right there. There's another clip on the back end of this. Pull it up, take off this clip, and remove the EGR. That'll allow you to just fold all the wires over and out of the way. Next, we have the EGR. First, you gotta get this pipe out of the way. So there's a 12 there. Then there's a 12 that mounts the EGR on there. Next, we have three studs. One's right here and two in the back right here. After all those are done, there's one more stud directly under this pipe, right to the right of this pipe, this tube I'm touching. Right to the right of it, there's another 12 right back under there under it. So to remove the studs, we are going to be using this. This is a, uh, was a torque socket, yep. size eight. You remove the nut, use this to remove the studs makes the job a lot easier. Next, I will be taking off this 10 millimeter bolt right here and the two that are behind it. Next step is to remove that hose clamp and this hose clamp right here. Pull this one up, pull that one out. Easiest way to pull this hose is Hose pliers from Harbor Freight. Grip it, twist it, pull. Grip, twist, and pull. Next, bolt, nut, bolt, nut, bolt. All 12 millimeter. Once you have the nuts and bolts out, you can pull the intake away. You can take off the PCV hose. Just push it to the right, like that, and that frees up the intake. Next, you have all the 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the valve cover along the whole perimeter and one in the middle. Don't forget that one. Once you have those 10 millimeter bolts out holding the valve cover, don't be shy. Get a screwdriver, pry that thing up. Don't forget that one inch hose right here. Next is the 14 millimeter nut up here. Remove that before you do these top ones on the motor mount. The long handle ratchet, deep socket 14. The flex head makes the job a lot easier. Once it's loose, it should be take off its finger. Just like that. Next, we have five 17 millimeters, four nuts, uh, sorry, four bolts, one nut. Right here, right there. Remove those. As you're removing the last one, you will notice the engine. That's perfectly fine. After you have the EGR all loose, just pick it up, bend it out of the way. The hoses will be fine, the rubber. 
Just set it like that, it'll be a lot easier. Next, remove this eight stud and these four, these three 14 millimeter bolts. Pull out the motor mount bracket. Okay, with the EGR out of the way, you remove these hoses, the clamps obviously, and that sensor. Now there's one bolt right there, um, one bolt right there, and one more beneath this hose going into the transmission. Once you have that bracket off, it's time to remove these spark plugs. These spark plugs are a little smaller than normal cars. This is a 14 millimeter socket to take out those spark plugs. Next, remove the water pump. I use a 12 gear wrench to do it. it makes the job a lot easier. There are four of the uh, 12 millimeter bolts that you can get from the upper. There's one that you can get from the lower. Okay, I'm gonna drain the oil next. I don't think I need to show you how to do that, but that's what's next. Okay, the oil's finished draining. Now, take the rest of this bolt out and remove the harmonic balancer. You're gonna need both hands, just reach around behind it like that. Okay, we're gonna put the crank bolt back in, but we're not gonna tighten it up, and just so we can spin the motor. Okay, now we are going to set the timing. The easiest way to do this is when you're looking at the timing marks, See how this line right here does not go all the way to the chain? He's gonna use a half inch ratchet and the 19 bolt. He's gonna spin the engine. Go ahead. We're looking for this mark, the long mark with the extra notch that hits the chain. We want that, as you're looking at it, to be at about two o'clock. That's how you know the engine's at top dead center. Next is the tricky part. With the engine at top dead center, or this notch at two o'clock, don't worry if it's not exactly on, it doesn't matter as much. We're going to move these three 12 millimeter bolts, millimeter, I can say that right, and these two 10 millimeter bolts and pull up this. Once you have those five bolts up, just gently rock it side to side and pull it up as finish unscrewing that one. Pull it up as an assembly. Do not remove the bolts completely. I have shop towel here. It's actually folded, three thick. I'm gonna place over the cam right here, just like that. And I have another one folded three thick placing it over that cam. Now, we put this back on, but we're only tightening up the tens. Nice and snug. Now that those tens are tight, the cam will not spin. We can start removing the timing cover bolts, the 14s, there's four of them, and the 12s all along. Also, we can start removing the timing chain tensioner, which is right here. There's a 10 millimeter nut and another 10 millimeter nut. <clears throat> okay, now we need to take off the oil filter housing. This is these four bolts right here. Make sure you have an oil pan under it because no matter how much you drain, it will leak more oil. And we're gonna remove the crank bolt. One more. Don't forget about this 10 millimeter bolt in the middle of the timing cover. Okay, let's do a quick accounting for bolts. On this whole timing cover, you have four of the 14 millimeter bolts. You have 15 of the 12 millimeter bolts. One 10, right there, one 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, this is how the timing chain tensioner is set in the engine. There are two 10 millimeter nuts. The lower one is behind this clip, the wires. And to compress it, we are going to push down on this tab. See that tab that moves? We're going to push down on this tab. You have a little hook right here. Just 
on, then you can let it go. Next, remove that 12 millimeter bolt, push this oil dipstick tube over. You have two 10 millimeter nuts on the thermostat housing and one bolt in the back. You're gonna need an extension for that one. Okay, next we have to remove this shroud. There's three 12 mil millimeter bolts. See this one, that one, and the one in the back. Once you make sure that all the bolts are off, time to take tensioners out, the thermostat housing is off. Get a nice, I have a standard, but you can get a nice little pry bar right here. That's the sweet spot. Don't be shy. It'll pop right off. Now that the timing chain cover is off, the timing cover, this little swing arm, just bend it out. It pulls right out. You can remove the chain. You have a 12 right here and a 12 right there. Take out this guide. Next, you're gonna remove all the 12s, not the 10s. This, that one, the three on each row, and there's a hidden one right there. Remember, don't remove any of the black 10s. Okay, I use this screwdriver a lot. I use it as a pry bar and a screwdriver. It's Duralast. Got it from AutoZone. I'm not trying to promote AutoZone. I'm just saying it's a good screwdriver. So I have all the 12 millimeter bolts up. Do not remove them all the way. Just keep them where they are. There's no need to take them out. Just make sure they're loose or reversed. Nice pry part. Uh, the uh, pry part that I use is right here, right between the head and this train. Just pop it up. That's basically it. The back end is going to be a little stiff. It's held on by silicone. Just hit it and it comes up. Put it in a safe place. And remove all these roller rockers. With the roller rockers removed, make sure that every valve has a valve stem cap on it. Sometimes they'll come up with the roller rockers or stay there. Don't lose those. Okay, with the cam train off, we can get to the exhaust. There's five nuts on it, on all the studs. There, there, middle, there, and on the backside. You can't see beyond that five. Uh, there's a 14 for the bracket. That's all you need to take off for that. And I'm gonna use this uh, two inch extension and a deep 12 millimeter. As he's removing the exhaust nuts and the uh, 14 millimeter bracket, uh, exhaust bracket and bolt, we're talking about the fuel line. Uh, you have a little clip right there. Just pull this out, pull the white apart. It just slides right off like that. You have the yellow tabs on both sides. Just give those guys a squeeze and drape it over. There's no need to remove the fuel injectors or the fuel rail. Just leave it attached. Next, it's time to remove the 10 head bolts. The size of these Priuses, 2000, uh, what is it, 2010 10, to 2015, 15. it's gonna be a size 12. Let's see here, will it focus? Yes, size 12, triple square. You can get the set from AutoZone, pretty cheap. All right, start removing these head bolts. I'm gonna go outside to in, I'm sure. You never start in the middle. You wanna make a few passes. Don't ever take the bolt out, just one, one all the way at once. You could ruin the threads or the head doing so. And like I said, go outside to in. Notice how he's not loosening it up all the way. You have about two cracks, then he stops. And repeat the process. And do a total of 
three passes to get him out. Just to be on the safe side. He's leaving tension on the bolts, also on the second pass. Just a little bit, but still tension. That'll prevent too much release pressure from being um, put on any singular bolt, which could rip the uh, bolt out of the block, bringing the threads with it. And as you see, final pass, I can spin it by hand at the end. That's me just be checking that it's all the way out. Looks like we're getting a call. I'm just gonna get a gun and check them out. Okay, on, on uh, most Toyotas here, the washer is not attached to the head bolt, so just make sure you pick up that as well. You could lose it in the engine. Okay, once you have the head bolts out, the head will still be stuck to the block. Use our classic screwdriver. Nice pry point right here. Just pop it up. Move it to the safe area. Right over here. Okay, next is we're gonna take this head to the machine shop. We already have another head ready to put back on, but um, take your head to the machine shop, get it inspected. You want them to inspect the seals on the valves. If they, if they need to lap them, lap them. If the head needs to be machined, have it machined. They're gonna check for warpage. And we're just gonna put a different head back on the engine that's already ready to go. On a side note, here's an example of why you don't use too much head gasket sealers. See this stuff? This is a calcium in most head gasket sealers. This brand most likely is Blue Devil. So you have these things right here. They'll seal the head gasket leak, but also it settles at the bottom of the radiator or just plugs up the radiator. Don't use head gasket sealer. I don't care what the bottle says. Lifetime warranty guaranteed to fix head gasket leaks. Didn't fix this one. And now we have to flush the whole engine out and replace the radiator as well. Look what that head gasket sealer does. Just, it plugs up the coin system, just plugs it up. Don't ever use it. It's not gonna work. Okay, we cleared out most of the uh, blue devil that they had inside this block. I uh, sprayed this rag with some carb clean and get rid of some of the carbon deposits on top. A nice clean surface for the new head gasket to go on to. And uh, if uh, you got some hard carbon deposits on this, just use a uh, small straight razor, kind of scrape it off. Should be fine. Okay, the new head gasket only really goes on one way. It's kind of obvious. Can't really put it on backwards. And we're ready to put the new head on. Okay, we have the uh, the head back on now, or a head on. Three things you want to look for, or three O-rings. That O-ring, that O-ring, and that O-ring. Replace those. And Jack's going to talk about the tightening sequence. Okay. Obviously get all the head bolts in. Um, you're going to want to do a certain pattern, starting with the middle, either one of the top two. Then you're going to go to the opposite bolt, then the opposite again, and make an X pattern after that, and then go to opposite again, opposite one more time, and finish the X pattern. Do 36 pounds, and you're going to do a 90 degree turn, and then a 45 degree turn. And the head will be tight. So, you can use a torque wrench when you're doing this first pass. You're going to set the torque wrench to 36. Once they're all 36, then you just use a regular wrench, not the torque wrench, or a ratchet, sorry. And you turn it 90 degrees. So basically, if the ratchet's facing at 3 o'clock, you bring it down to 6. Start with the middle, then X pattern going out. The final pass, instead of 90 degrees, will be 45 degrees. So just half the distance between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So three passes, 36 pounds, 90 degrees, then 45 degrees. Okay, the head's torqued down. We have this silicone from the factory. We 
we only have to worry about the outside part of silicone, but we want to make sure we get all of this browner silicone. It's all going to be brown, same color. Clean that off. Get a nice, dry, clean surface for the next layer of silicone. You can do this. Usually the, uh, the head shop will do this, or you could do this on your own. Avoid taking it to the head shop. It doesn't really matter. As long as eventually it ends up clean for the new silicone. Wipe this off. And I'll show you how much silicone to put on. Okay, now time to put a bead of silicone around the edge here. You don't need silicone right here. This is where the uh, oil goes anyways. But right here you do. You want to be sure not to put silicone inside these little holes. Those are the oil passages. Okay, use black silicone, maximum oil resistance. We use the Permatex brand, it's been good to us so far. And a nice, liberal amount it looks like a lot but a lot is going to be squeezed out of the side so just do a swipe get it nice and even if it goes in the bolt holes that's fine the yeah, bolt hole doesn't matter. Just don't want to go into the oil pass. Just, just don't put any over it. Okay, before we put on the cams, uh, I recommend doing the exhaust. It'd be a lot easier now. Don't forget these 512s you took off. Just put them right back on now and make it, your life a whole lot easier. Okay. Remember, before we put these roller rockers on, that all of the valves still have these valve stem caps. That'll prevent ticking. And it allows these roller rockers to sit on properly. When you put these on, make sure you put them on straight, not at an angle like that. Okay, now it's time. We have all the rockers in. We have the silicone bead down. We're gonna put the valve train, or the uh, can assembly down. Make sure you line it up nice and straight before you drop it down. There we go. We're going to tighten up all of these 12 millimeter bolts except for the ones on this row, not these three, because that's the holders. We're going to start with the centers and work our way out so it goes down evenly. Okay, very important. This is the timing cover. You want to make sure to scrape off all are the residual silicone, especially in these parts, do those squares right here. Scrape it off, clean it off, get it nice and clean with the surface area. Very important also to clean this off. And when you put the new timing chain tensioner on, make sure you have a new timing chain tensioner gasket. They tend to leak a lot. Okay, I'm gonna clean it and then put a piece of silicone on. Okay. Now this is nice, clean, and dry. We're gonna put some silicone on it. where those pieces of silicone had stayed on. That's where the gap, right here is about where the gap between the head and the block is. If you look, go over here with the camera, you'll see right here, there's a gap that actually goes in. That's where a lot of the oil leaks come on after the timing cover has been taken off and put back on. Make sure you clean this well and put extra silicone dabbed into that little groove there on both sides front and rear okay after the head and the cam trainers on but before the intake um, time to put all these hoses and clips back on and all your bolts you know back there the mounting ones under the pipe and then we'll move on to the EGR mm -hmm. all right we have another video explaining the timing marks on this Prius but we'll just go over it briefly 
that real quick. The two links are gonna be lined up with that first mark we were talking about. The one link, that, that mark, that's little trying, uh, rectangle that's right there. And if you go below, you'll see a little dot. And it is right there. Right there. Right there. As long as those remain on, we'll get this little swing arm guide. Get it on. Get the chain lined up. Push it in all the way. And it will stay in place as long as you push it in far enough. Next, we're gonna put the timing cover on and start bolting it back together. Next, gonna put the 14s, 12s, and the 110 back on and tighten all this back up. Now that the timing cover is bolted back on, at least the upper part at least, we're gonna put in the timing chain tensioner. Remember, use a new timing chain tensioner gasket. Don't use the old one. Okay, I'm putting back the EGR. As you can see, I already bent it back, <coughs> excuse me, bent it back over. And I have the studs in the back end. Uh, just reach around, it's not hard. It's around like this, you can put them in easy and uh, don't forget there is a gasket in between these two pieces oh yeah don't cut your fingers it's uh, surprisingly sharp if you push hard once the timing cover is uh, bolted on at least uh, most of it and the timing chain tensioner is in we now can remove these loosen up these uh two 10 millimeter bolts now we can pull out the that's how we use. Now put them back on and tighten up all five bolts. Next is going to be the thermostat housing and the water pump. It's pretty self explanatory. We have another video talking about the water pump um, in particular if you need to see it. Okay, I'm putting the oil filter back on. These are two O rings right here. Just don't forget to change those and clear the mating, clean the mating surface before you put it back on. Don't forget the 12 right here for the oil dipstick tube. And next is going to be the intake. Number one thing, do not forget to hook the PCB back up. It's so much easier before you bolt it on than after you bolt it on. Otherwise, the engine will start, but it'll stop, stall a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Time for the valve cover. Be careful not to lose the rubber that belongs on these two pieces. In this case, it actually got stuck to this. We're going to take those off and replace those for new ones, but make sure you don't lose them. Otherwise, it won't run right. Five bolts of the intake are back on. Do not forget to do that hose and the hose right here. Hook up the map sensor right here and the purge. It's going to be right here. Two hoses, two sensors. Okay, before you move the wires back, make sure you get this little vacuum hose back on right there. I'm gonna get the two 10 millimeter bolts that go here and here. Also, the plastic cover that goes over it with one more additional 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, now it's time to put the wires back. Real nice, just drape it over nicely. Make sure this goes in front of the heater hoses, AC lines, and just kind of lay it back on there. Injectors in just, place. Uh, you should have no extra clips that don't have a mate, so make sure everything finds its home. Ground wires, don't forget these, otherwise it won't start. Okay, got new spark plugs in. Do not forget to hook the uh, coils back up, put them back in. You, uh, most likely you don't need new coils. If you feel like buying them, go ahead, buy them. I do recommend getting new spark plugs though. Next is gonna be the engine mount bracket, the three 14 millimeter bolts. We have that uh, on right now. We're gonna do the engine mount. This is where it gets a little tricky. We're gonna line it up to where the stud fits into the middle, but because we have a gap, we're going to jack the engine up. We have the engine underneath the uh, oil pan of the, I'm sorry, we have the jack under the oil pan of the engine. And jack it up to just where it touches, that's it. 
Now we can start putting all the bolts back on. Okay, don't forget to redo these three clips and attach it up top. Now it's time to start getting the small things. Don't forget this bracket with a nut and a bolt. Bracket right here, it's gonna to attach to the engine mount. And we're going to bolt this guy back in its place. Ground wire. Next is the air box. Just place it on. It's going on the same, the opposite way that you took it off. So you get all these. Don't forget that bolt, the two in here, two right there. Then we'll put the air filter on. If you don't, if you don't have a power ratchet or power tool to get the crank bolt on, um, you can just use your ratchet you used before to undo it and a hammer. Give it a few whacks, tighten it up. The engine will spin a little, but it's fine. A few hits will be enough to tighten it. At this point, the engine's pretty much done. I'm uh, just gonna get this guy in there, slide it in nice and evenly. You'll see the holes line up. And that guy. All that's together now. And I'm gonna fill it up with oil. Use 020 synthetic only. No other oil. Okay, oil's topped off. Coolant is topped off. Left the radiator cap off or the coolant uh, tank cap off uh, to allow the system to burp so we can keep pouring in as the engine runs. One noise you wanna listen to when we first start the engine up the first time is this gonna be the um, timing chain tensioner rattle. It'll go away after about five seconds of uh, starting the engine once it uh, builds up oil pressure. And make sure that you do have the fuel hooked back up. All right, go ahead. Okay, engine's running. Don't worry about the smoke. That's just oil burn off. That falls on the exhaust manifold when you take everything apart. Hey, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Got some money. Not made of money. Well, I was kind of thinking now that you got like 1,200 subscribers, how people donate a dollar? Like a dollar each? Uh, yeah. We're like, not like we're not set up with Venmo or anything. There you are. What's that? Did you really set up Venmo? Yep, I did it for you. It says Prius Bros. We're not Prius Bros. We're Gaskin Masters. It's the same thing. But we're gasket masters. You put. Well, I kind of figured because you fix Priuses almost all the time. You get somebody to donate, then you can have it. Sweet. Donate a dollar to at Prius Pros Venmo. Thanks for watching. Besides, I'm the one that edits all the videos, anyways. <laughs>